Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Faction of Hope Democratic Party disowns petition against victory of President Buhari as tribunal turns down request by faction of the party to call more witnesses against the president. President Buhari vows full implementation of autonomy for state legislature and judiciary, says MOVE will further strengthen democracy in Nigeria. Governors of the six southwest states meet in Ibadan over increasing kidnapping and other crimes in the region agree to tackle menace jointly. And diplomatic tension between the U.S. and Iran rises further as President Trump lashes out at Iran's reaction to his announcement of fresh sanctions against the Middle Eastern country. On business news tonight, Nigeria's immediate past finance minister Zainab Ahmed sees sustainability financing as contributing to economic growth, says government will increase value at a tax rate of 7.5 from the current 5% in 2020. On sports news tonight, Super Eagles of Nigeria sets to face Guinea in their second match of the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations as the Nigeria Football Federation resolves bonus row with the team. And from Abuja, Nigeria's Security and Civil Defense Corps to deploy agro ranges to man 250 ranches as the federal government moves to establish castle settlements across the country. drama at the presidential election petitions tribunal today when a faction of the Hope Democratic Party disowned the petition filed by its presidential candidate Ambrose Uru and the party against the election of President Muhammad Buhari. At the resumed hearing of the petitions against the president, the HDP faction led by one Roland Tampere announced that its presidential candidate was never authorized or mandated to file any petition against the February 23 election. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. Parties in the petition filed by the Hope Democratic Party at the Presidential Election Tribunal awaiting the commencement of the day's proceedings. <laughs> and just as the tribunal was settling into the business of the day, two factions of the Hope Democratic Party announced appearances, one led by Mr. Ambrose Owaru and another by one Poland Tampere. Mr. Tampere filed a motion asking the tribunal to strike out the petition filed by Mr. Ambrose Waru and his faction on the grounds that it is strange to his faction of the party. Mr. Tampere, in the motion argued by his counsel, Anthony Abolahol, pleaded with the tribunal to remove the party's name from the petition because Hope Democratic Party has no intention of challenging the outcome of the presidential poll. However, the presidential candidate of the party, Mr. Ambru Sowaru, vehemently opposed the attempt to scuttle his petition with a counter-affidavit of six paragraphs deposited by one Awal Abdullahi who claimed to be the national financial secretary of the party. He said the bid to remove the party's name from the petition is a gang up against his petition and urged the tribunal to ignore the purported factional chairman. Mr. Waru's counsel, Mr. Tukunonyere Munjoku, in the counter affidavit, described the factional chairman as an imposter who is not known to the party in any capacity. In the ruling on another motion, the tribunal permitted the HDP presidential candidate, Mr. Ambu Sowaru, to amend clerical errors in his petition, but refused the request to call additional witnesses to testify against President Buhari. Justice Mohammed Gerber ruled that the 21 days allowed by the law for any party to file a petition and list of witnesses, their statements and oath and other documents to be used for the petition had lapsed. Hence, additional witnesses could not be allowed. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. The president believes ensuring autonomy for state legislature and judiciary will further strengthen democracy and deepen inclusiveness of citizens. While receiving the reports of the Presidential Implementation Committee on Financial Autonomy of the State Legislature and Judiciary, President Buhari said the government will study its recommendations and take an appropriate decision. A statement from the Presidential Spokesman, Mr. Femi Adishino, quotes the President as saying, I went through a terrible time getting here for three times I contested elections. That's why I want to stabilize the system so that others will not pass through the same experience. Both young and ordinary Nigerians depend on leadership to ensure justice is always done. So, we must ensure 
that trust is not compromised, end of quote. The committee was set up in March of 2019 to recommend ways of application, operation and observance of the relevant section of the Constitution. Meanwhile, the Presidential Implementation Committee on Financial Autonomy for State Legislature and Judiciary says implementation of its recommendations will entrench democratic principles and separation of powers. Members of the committee were led by the immediate past Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, to the presidential villa. Mr. Malami, who spoke to State House correspondents, says the committee has submitted an interim report detailing modalities for implementation. Arising from the position of the president relating to the deepening of democracy, relating to the upholding the constitutional culture within the context of governance, Mr. President has sometimes back in March precisely put in place a committee. That committee is a committee that is intended to package and make recommendations as it relates to the application, operations, and uh, observance of Section 121 of the Constitution, which establishes the autonomy of the state legislature and indeed the state judiciary. So the intention of the committee, having uh, the committee in place, is to see what can be done in terms of giving effect to the constitutional order as it relates to the autonomy of the state legislature and state judiciary within the context of the provision of the constitution. So today, the committee has indeed concluded its assignment substantially by way of uh, making available to the president an interim report which is intended to uh, present and uh, uh, to present before the president the recommendations that we think on the modalities that should now ensure at the end of the day due observance with the constitutional provision of section 121 and due observance of the sustenance of the independence of the state legislature and indeed the state judiciary so it is about the constitutional order it is about, about the sustenance of the requirement of the constitution as it relates to the uh, independence of the state judiciary and indeed the state legislature. And the committee had indeed presented a report to the president. To discuss autonomy at state level for the legislature and judiciary, I'm being joined live from Abuja by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Akishaya George. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news at 10 as we look at this. Now, look at this. the idea of separation of powers and even much. autonomy is provided in the Constitution. It's there. It's always been. So what do you think a separate committee you know, is needed to set up modalities, etc.? Why do you think we needed one? Why do you think we needed one? Um, the committee was necessary because um, there has been absolute non-compliance with the provision of the Constitution. The executive, you know, at the state level has continued to control the funds meant for the legislative body as well as the judiciary against the letters and um, intent of the Constitution. So it was um, therefore a step in the right direction for the federal government to have established this committee which is aimed at ensuring that the that there is compliance with the provisions of the Constitution. Yeah, we're looking at Section 121 yeah. of the Constitution. Section 121 of the Constitution. I was trying to say, looking at our political experience, uh, we see many instances where there's a tussle between the chief executive in the state, meaning the governor, and then the legislators in the state house of assembly. How feasible is this plan when it comes to full implementation? When you look at the way our politics plays out. Plays out. I think um, the government has um, taken the bull by the horn by setting up a high-powered committee which would uh, sort out the issues of um, practical implementation and compliance with the provisions of the Constitution because we cannot compromise the autonomy, the financial autonomy of the judiciary and um, as well as of the legislature at the state level. Otherwise, these arms of government will, will exist merely in name and will not be able to perform their constitutional functions. You know, and in fact, I believe that's one, what, you know, one, one of the factors largely responsible for the low level of performance at that level of government. Because power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. A situation where as, as governors you know, enjoy so much powers with little or no checks from the legislature, 
and then uh, when the judiciary attempts to correct them, they, they st begin to intimidate uh, you know, judges and, and, and the judiciary. So th that's one of the factors responsible for, for misgovernance at the, level, at, the, at the state level. So I think this action that has been taken by the federal government to establish a committee to sort out the practical implementation of financial autonomy for the legislative arm of government as well as for the judiciary at the state level is a welcome development. And I believe the report of the committee should not end on the shelf. It should um, be given practical effect such that all the agents of government, Accountant General of the Federation, uh, Governors Forum, uh, every other body that has one thing or the other to do to ensure direct release of funds to the heads of the legislature, to the legislature as well as to the heads of the uh, judiciary. All of these bodies uh, must comply with yes. the provisions of the Constitution. That's actually where I was going when you were talking about the fact that the report shouldn't be left on the shelf. Financial autonomy is a delicate matter. You know, one will say, is it really possible you know, for them to set aside a preparation for the state without interference and you know, without anybody holding them to ransom before it is released? Do you really see that happening? thing which I think must also accompany this um, decision is that provisions must be put in place to ensure that when these funds are released directly to the legislative arm as well as to the judiciary, there are checks and balances as well. You know, uh, there are a public accounts committee of the legislature, there are um, several other ways provided by the constitution, you know, to ensure that those other bodies don't abuse this issue of financial aut autonomy, you know, as has been the case uh, even with the, as has been the challenge with the concentration of all the financial powers in the governor, in the, in the, in the governor at that level of government. You know, well, this is a delicate thing, but that's what the constitution provides for. Mm -hmm. Financial autonomy is the minimum requirement for independence of the judiciary. A situation whereby judges or the judiciary has to go cap in hand begging governors for, for, for basic funds to run the, 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 the courts you know, definitely cannot augur well uh, for, for a sound democracy, cannot augur well for a sustainable democracy. A situation where a governor may decide to punish judges for, 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 for giving orders in, in accordance with the law, you know, because the governors feel that, um, uh, uh, some governors sometimes may feel that judges are too independent. They expect judges to take orders from them. That is undemocratic. That is not the intent of the constitution. So financial autonomy may be delicate, but it is the minimum requirement for independence of the legislature as well as independence of the, uh, 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 of the judiciary. But at the same time, there must be provisions for checks and balances to ensure that the autonomy is not abused. And I believe this committee that has been set up would also have gone as far as making recommendations to ensure balance, to ensure balance, you know, as between the interactions of the three arms of government. All right, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, yeah. Professor right. Yemi yeah. Abisha yeah. George, yeah. thanks for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Now, still talking about governance, President Buhari is once again asking state governments to work with his administration in its quest for sustainable peace and development. The president was addressing a delegation from Nasarawa State that visited him at the State House in Abuja just before he received the leadership of Afeni Ferry, the Yoruba Social Cultural Organization. He also called for investment in education and security while promising to introduce policies to address the herdsmen farmers' clashes. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. Politicians, traditional and political leaders from Nasarawa State took up seats in the council chamber. It's a courtesy call on the president and it's led by the state governor. Your Excellency, sir. He thanked President Buhari for several projects in the state and for appointing their sons, promising to help tackle insecurity. I'm happy to inform you that in Nasarawa State we started programs on agriculture, we started programs involving our traditional rulers so they will have a role when it comes to the issue of security in Nigeria. I could always count. The president recalls the role of the state in his political journey, calling for continued support. The federal government cannot do it alone. We need the full cooperation and support of the states, local governments, as well as traditional and religious leaders. The Nasrallah State delegation says it planned to immortalize the president by naming an institution of learning after him. Also at the chambers is a leadership of the Yoruba social-cultural group, Afeni Fere. 
Afeniferi thanked and expressed support for President Buhari. The visitors consider five issues of interest to them, among which are security and federalism. By improving on the apparent shortage of the manpower in the Nigerian police force and by extending control of the police from the state to local government level. I'm very grateful. President Buhari acknowledges the contributions of the region, enumerating his achievements, including fight against corruption. I will tell you as a, as a friend of Harry, that's how I had to deal, no matter how reluctant today, with the former chief of justice, because there are millions of dollars and euros, not to talk of Naira, which were not declared. And I wonder which type of function some of us have. How can you sit and preside and lock people up for years and maybe sentence them to death, yet you are not doing what the Constitution said you should do for what you find that a vital institution? This visit came on the heels of similar one by traditional rulers from Kogi State. From the presidential villa Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, court sentences Togolese Cook to life imprisonment for the murder of his boss, the chief executive officer of Credit Switch Limited, Okbe Bademosi. That's in a moment. Do stay with us. <laughs> 